With a four-run output yesterday, White Sox hitters continue to be a bright spot so far in 2011 as they currently reign as the league's best offense. And Sox fans hope that trend continues today as Ozzy and crew look to close out the Rays in the four-game finale. Next on Comcast Sportsnet. From the city beautiful Chicago, Illinois, Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox Baseball. It's Paul Canerco, Alex Rios, A.J. Perzinski, and the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Joe Madden's Tampa Bay Rays. Hi, everybody, and welcome. With Steve Stone, I'm Ken Harrell. Since we get set to bring you the finale of this four-game set and the fourth of this ten-game homestand, we'll have three with Oakland starting tomorrow and then three with the Angels to finish out the homestand. But the Sox in the first two games, they split those. Then yesterday, Sox won it 4-2 to two behind A.J. Pruszynski's big two-run double and some fine pitching by Phil Humber. And this afternoon, a couple of big right-handers out on that bump. Gavin Floyd going to the mound for the Sox. And the first time out, he didn't have his curveball until later in the game. He used a straight change. I think A.J. helped nurse him through that outing. He got a no decision, but he's looking for better today. It's a red-hot day at the ballpark. It's going to be very lively. And Gavin's going to have to get that curveball over and try to negate some of the speed of the Rays because they don't have much offense. They're going to be running a lot. Jeff Neiman going to the mound for the Rays, and he's a big right-hander with a good curveball. In fact, he's 10 over 500 lifetime. This is a pretty good pitcher who's off to a shaky start this year, as are all of the Rays. So if we can have somebody take care of those spunky Indians who have won six in a row, we're one game out of first place, and we could come for a tie today. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way. White Sox baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. 75 years being right here in Illinois means no one's closer to your wellness. Experience. Wellness. Everywhere. Subway. Every day at Subway, choose from many delicious regular footlong subs for just $5. Subway, eat fresh. Honda, visit your local Honda dealer today or go to shophonda.com and find great values on a new Honda. AT&T U-verse. find out more of what's possible at att.com. AT&T, rethink possible. And by United, proud to fly the Chicago White Sox.
Comcast. Don't miss the action. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. On a beautiful day for baseball, the wind blowing straight out. It's in the low 80s. And you couldn't ask for a better day to pitch. And with that in mind, this is a lineup that Gavin Floyd is going to be facing. Sam Fold leading it off with Johnny Damon off to a really slow start. But he's killed Gavin Floyd. Then it's Upton, Johnson, Zobris, Joyce, Rodriguez, Shopik, and Reed Brignac hitting nine. The defense and now the lineup behind Gavin Floyd. Left to right, it's Pierre Rios and Quentin in the infield. Morell. Vizquel gets a start today with Beckham and Canerco. A.J. once again behind the plate. And the Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Gavin Floyd. Got a no decision his first time out. He did take the game through seven innings. Didn't have his best stuff. They scored on him early, and then he settled down a bit, and we're looking for an earlier command of the curveball today. We'll take a look at today's matchup. As you can see, Tampa Bay off to a horrendous start offensively. Our Sox doing pretty well, and the offense has been in high gear. Now we'll see if the pitching staff and the bullpen can start to get some consistency. If that happens, this is going to be a very difficult team to contend with in the Central this year. So they throw the ball around the infield. Paul Nard has gone out to talk with Gavin Floyd. He looks like he's about ready to go. And we're ready for baseball, trying to take three of four from these pesky Rays. And so I will turn it over to my play-by-play partner, Hawk Harrelson. All right, Stone Pony, thank you. And once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet as they wait for that clock to hit 110. And then we can begin. But the finale of this four-game set, Sox took the opener 5-1, to one, and the Sox gave them game two. Had a 7-4 lead in the ninth inning, gave them five unearned runs. They wanted 9-7, to seven. and then yesterday in a very exciting, well-pitched ball game by Umber and Wade Davis. Sox won it four to two. So here's Sam Foles, who has made. In case you missed that catch yesterday, it is absolutely one of the best you'll ever see. And the first pitch of the ball game is taken for a strike. You always have to watch a bunt with fold up, especially with Paulie well back at first base. And if Fold gets on, he's going to be off to the races. They're going to try to run Gavin out of the ballpark. Nice play by Gordon. Yes. Beautiful play by Beckham. Ball was hit hard by Fold. On a daily basis, Gordon Beckham has looked better and better at second base, this time diving to his left from his knees, makes a good solid throw. And anytime the starting pitcher doesn't have to move into the stretch after one hitter, he's in pretty good shape, especially with the numbers of Johnny Damon lifetime against Gavin. 10 for 15. As he takes a strike. Well, Gordon, even last year when he was in that two months funk, for a young player, the guy knows how to play the game. He's got great baseball acumen. As there is out number two. But the one thing that he does not do that a lot of young players will do is he does not take his offense or lack of out to the field with it. Well, he hasn't done that from the time first time we saw him. Never. He realized there was a lot of ways to beat you. He's a great base runner. He doesn't have the greatest speed in the world, but he's an excellent base runner. And he's as aware as anybody that we've seen on the bases because he knows where everybody is on every pitch. Strike to Upton. DJ hitting it 321 on the season. DJ's been their most consistent hitter. He's another one of those guys, if you let him get on base, he's going to try to take advantage of it with his speed. Two balls and a strike. Now feel straight up. Not equidistant. Close, didn't get it. The Upton brothers pretty talented. B.J. first round pick second pick overall in 2002 for these Rays. And Justin first round pick. First pick for the Arizona Diamondbacks four years ago. Well, there's the two out walk. 
And that'll bring up Dan Johnson. Throwing Dan Johnson a first ball fastball could be a big problem because the swirling winds can make it pretty easy on a high fly ball to go out in right field. This guy does not hit a breaking ball very well. He does not hit a change up very well. Crawley, nice pick. And that'll do it. Nothing across. A couple of good defensive plays behind him after half inning play. It's Tampa Bay nothing and the good guys coming to back. Four from these depleted Rays. It's going to be Pierre leading off with Gordon Beckham in the two spot. Then it's Rios, Canerco, Carlos Quentin, AJ Przinsky, who's had a very good series with Omar Vizquel, Mark Tian, and Brent Morrell playing third and hitting ninth. The defense and how they'll line up behind Neiman left to right. Fold up and Joyce in the infield. Rodriguez, Brignac, Zobrist, and Johnson. Kelly Shopik behind the plate. And there's Alexis pursuing perfection starting pitcher. It's Jeff Neiman. He's 10 games over lifetime. Coming to prominence a couple of years ago. He's had double figure wins in both of his last two full seasons. Where he's won 25 games for these Rays. Not overpowering, but a pretty steady pitcher. So here we go. Juan Pierre to lead it off. And before we show you our picks to click you at home, select yours. Corners in close. Outfield short, swung around to the left. And bases loaded, two out yesterday. One Pierre to the plate. Watch this catch by Sam Fall. Well, that is awesome. That's a page out of Jim Edmonds' book. As there's a strike and a count one and one. Even more impressive when you figure that he can play all three outfield positions and how shallow he was playing against Pierre. You don't figure Juan's going to pull the ball like that. Well, that's in the right field. Joyce. And that's out number one. I was talking to some of the players after the game yesterday, and they said Sam Fuller is as good, if not better, than any outfielder they've ever seen play. And that's saying something. When you can play all three outfield positions and run the way he can and help key an offense that's struggling, I mean, when he gets on, he's always a stolen base threat. He's going to be pretty valuable, if not as a starter, certainly as a fourth outfield. Here's Beckham. Takes first pitch strike. Gordon. Four for 13 with a homer and two RBIs in this series. That ball hit deep. Roll back on the track, jumps, you can put it on the board. Yes! Yes! 
Number two for Beckham, and the Sox take a quick 1-0 lead. Sixth RBI of the year for Gordon as he jumped on Neiman early and took it out of the park. A Ford home run replay. It's a rolling breaking ball that wound up on the inner portion and down. And Gordon gets just enough of it just over the outstretched glove of Sam Fole. So here's Rios. Takes a strike Alex. Three for 12 in the series with three RBIs. One for five lifetime off the 6 9 right hander Jeff Neiman. Gordon now five for seven lifetime against Neiman. There is a soft comebacker. Two down. Neiman is a king size right hander at 6 9. They list him at 260. He was another of their first round draft choices. Fourth pick overall in 2004. And when you're picking that high, you can't afford to whiff on that pick. And here he is in the middle of a starting rotation and 10 games over 500 lifetime. So they did a pretty nice job with him. There's Pauly. 5 for 11 in the series with a homer and two RBIs. Hitting a 375, a homer he's driven in nine. And that ball hit high. Stretch. Way back, he looks up. You can put that on the board. Yes. It is 2 nothing Sox. Home run number two, RBI number 10 for Pauly. Test ball right down the middle of the plate. You just don't want to miss or get careless with a fastball to Paul Canerco when he's swinging the bat like he is now. 17th home run career wise against these Rays, and just like that, our Ford home run replay shows when you get one down and out over the plate, it goes a long way. We told you in the opening it would be a very lively day here, and it started out that way. So here is Carlos. Breaking ball strike. Quinn hitting at 400 with two long ones and 10 RBIs. That's flipped out in the right field. Joyce is there, but solo homers by Beckham and Canerco will go to the second leading 2 zip. Two nothing good guys here in the top of the second inning. And McCoy concluding his warm up tosses. We'll have Zobrist, Joyce, and Rodriguez. It's kind of interesting that the right side of the infield that made two excellent plays to help Gavin get out of that first inning 
gave him a two run lead. With solo home runs in the bottom of the first inning. And of course with those home runs the Alex Nelly his family will donate one hundred dollars. The White Sox charities for every Sox home hit throughout the course of the season. That is number nine and ten, so one thousand dollars donated by Alex Nellius in loving memory of Ursula. Sex wing strike is Obris. He is two for thirteen in the series. Lifetime against Gavin, three for nine of the three hits. One of them stayed in the park. That last curveball was a good one. Well, like we talked about Umber yesterday, if he stays back, doesn't rush out there. He's got a good one, and he showed us that yesterday. Gavin, same thing. He has a tendency sometimes to get out there too quick. But there's a good one. Didn't get it. Well, this is the kind of day that you're looking for if you're going to throw a curveball. It's warm. You're going to sweat. You haven't tried to dot the outside corner. That's a pretty good pitch. Didn't get it. And a full count. There's one of the heroes of yesterday. Bill Lumber threw the ball exceptionally well. His curveball just got better and better as he moved along. Folly. Like picking a bowl full of chairs. So one out, that'll bring up the right fielder, Matt Joyce. Go for six in the series. Even when this team does get Longoria back, and let's face it, they're going to be a lot better with Evan Longoria. He only had five at bats this year. They still have to find somebody to hit behind him so that the whole league doesn't pitch around him. And if they can't find that, it's going to negate Longoria. Well, you can book that down. <laughs> Why would you pitch to him if you don't have anybody behind you who can scare you? No, he's, he's in for a long year. He's going to spend a lot of time at first base this season. Or get impatient, start swinging the pitches out of the zone, and that's the worst thing he he's can do. He's too smart for that. He's too he's too smart for that. Joe Madden's too smart for that. He won't let that happen. That ball get hard. That would be one hop off the fence. So Joyce in the second. That's his second two bagger of the season. You can cancel a post game show. This Rays lineup came in hitting 167 as a team. That's most amazing for a group of guys that were thought to at least contend, but losing Carl Crawford, losing Longoria to the disabled list, losing Carlos Pena. And Bartlett was a pretty good offensive shortstop for them for a while. The breaking ball. Sean Rodriguez, 25 year old, all purpose player. And it is windy. Down ball. Omar. Two down. Pretty decent base running by Joyce, knowing that Omar probably was not going to take a gamble and try to get him at third. Now, because Gavin does throw a lot of breaking balls in the dirt, puts a little more pressure on AJ to block anything down. You know, if there had been nobody out, Omar would have nailed him at third. If one out, he's going to get the out. Yeah. He had a shot at him. I mean, he crossed right in front of the baseball. Here's Shopik hitting at 250, two for six in the series, and one for four lifetime against Gavin. That's what we were talking about, and AJ on the first pitch equal to the task as he saves a run. Top of the fifth inning in Detroit, 4 1 Kansas City. Those Royals are playing pretty good, solid baseball. 
tied with us at five and three. Two and zero. Oh. The umpires today: Paul Nard behind the plate, Doug Eddings at first, Dana Demuth at second, and Kerwin Danley at third. And the count three and up. Oh. Other action around the American League shows Texas at Baltimore, New York at Boston, Angels at home against Toronto, Oakland at Minnesota. And he chops that one foul on the 3 0 count. And Seattle hosting the tribe, the red hot Cleveland Indians. How about those Oakland's? In the ball game last night, one to nothing against Minnesota, shutting them out, one to nothing in their own ballpark. Gio Gonzalez winning that game. And Nick Blackburn, pretty tough, but coming up on the short end again of a one to nothing game. Full count with two out, Joyce at third. That's going to help Gavin because he's starting to cut the ball. See that ball at the last instant just move away from Shopik who thinks it's a fastball. Tries to square it up and then comes away with no contact. Out and around that one. Shopik who hurt his knee in game two. Able to come back and I'm surprised because well, that, that looked pretty ugly. Yeah he said it was really sore yesterday. And it's still a little sore today, but he wants to play. And he's got a tremendous advantage because speed is nowhere in evidence in his game. Once again, the payoff. He gone. And that'll do it after an inning and a half. Two nothing White Sox. A lot of at bats in game situations. You don't see that a whole lot from most guys, but he attributes that to the fast start offensively. The guys just getting much more game action, and they might not have been happy about it in the spring, but they're certainly happy about the way it's kicked off now. So here's AJ. AJ at 267. No homers, four RBIs, two big ones yesterday, making it a 4 1 ball game. He is. Five for 11 lifetime off the 6 9 right hand. Good rip. Fouled it back. He even made a mistake with that one. He was lucky to get away with it. At 6 9, you can certainly get a lot of tilt on your breaking ball. 
let's take a look at the location. He throws that one right up in the eyes of AJ and that's the same pitch he doubled on yesterday. There's a good breaking ball down. So with one out let's check out our picks to click this afternoon. Jimangio, our director of the crew, the wheels, strong ponies, going to go with Gordon Beckham, who's five for seven lifetime off meeting. And started out and very well. Jim Canatero and Cassie Canatero and I, we're going to go with Mark Tian. In honor of Jimmy Olsen. You've been riding that horse. The horse has been swinging the bat pretty good. horse has been swinging it real well. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir, he has indeed. He is a definite major league hitter. I mean. Well, also, you know, and you credit Ozzy on this. When you get a guy that's swinging the bat and it's hot, you might as well keep playing him. I know Adam Dunn is not in the lineup and can't play, but ride Teen as long as he's swinging like he is. Omar. Two down. Now, when Adam is ready, he's going to be in that lineup. Well, there's no doubt about that. And he was trying to get ready before the game today. I don't think it's going to be too much longer for the big guy. He took some swings earlier. As you can see, he'll be bunting a lot this year, so he's working on that. The end fouls it away left side. He's four for seven with a homer and three RBIs in this series. And lifetime against Neiman, three for seven with a homer. Two out, one and one to count here in the bottom of the second. Just get it up in the air to right field. That's going to be it. And the count two and one. That's high in the left. Ball going back, 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 back. Right in front of the state farm sign drops it. Fighting the wind, fighting the sun. And we'll see if Bob Rosenberg gives him that double. Tough play with the wind grabbing this one, looking up into the sunshine. But he had it. He didn't. Bob's going to charge yesterday's hero with an air. E7. Pick him up, make him hurt. Here's Brent hitting at 290, two for seven in the series with an RBI. Good hard slider by Neiman, who has both a curveball and a slider. Pass off the corner. And the count evens at one. See the flags blowing across. But as Hawk told me before the game, that means that it just comes in, swirls, and moves straight out to right field. For the most part, as that ball hit in the right center field, nobody's going to get that one. So Brent comes through with a big two out RBI double. Yes, it's three nothing. We talked all spring. That's a competition at third base that Brent Morrell won largely because of his glove. But all the Sox could talk about when you talk to Ozzy and you talk with Greg Walker was how surprising this guy is going to be with the bat. That's RBI number six. He drove that ball with authority to right center field. Don't stop now, boys. Come on, Juan, pick him up. As a rule here at U.S. Cellular Field, if you see the flags going from right to left, the ball's going to jump to right field and sometimes to left as well. It's just almost the reverse. 
And that's foul ball. You don't see many days where this is not a good part to hit home runs. You might see it occasionally. The wind will knock the ball down the left field, but not all that often. Well, we got 81 home games. I would say tops five or six. Yeah, tops. I think Adam Dunn, when he really gets his rhythm, is going to be very happy that this is his home park. And there's a base hit. Well, here comes Brent. Bobbled by Joyce. He'll score. And it's 4 0. That a boy won. One's got five runs batted in. Could have easily had three more, but for the heroics of Sam Fold yesterday. But Pierre is starting to pull the ball a lot more now. This is another rolling breaking ball. And one just takes it to the right side. Now it's going to be a close play at the plate until Matt Joyce double clutches. And then no play at all. So two unearned runs. And here's Beckham. Cranked out his second homer last inning. And if you miss that home run, poof. Early in the count, he got a roller and just barely took it out of the park. Good lead by one. He is four for four in stolen bases. Of course, last year he led the major leagues with 68. There he goes. Stop it. Real quick release right there. And they get him. Beautiful peg by Shopik. But the Sox pick up a pair. We'll go to the third leading for Zip. A's right here at U.S. Cellular Field. Coverage begins at 630 with Sportsnet Central. Sox A's tomorrow at 7 right here. Comcast Sportsnet fans best friend. First pitch strike. Reed Brignac. The shortstop hitting at 214. 4-0 Sox. Stops that foul. On a sad note. Send out our deepest sympathies to the friends and family of Eric Kolsieski. Eric was a big, big baseball fan, with a big, big heart, a generous heart. And his family and friends are going to miss you very much. Ah! 
He gone. Back door. Grab some bench. If Devin's got that one. It's going to be a very difficult day for these Rays. That ball eased over the outside corner by AJ. It had the plate. And for a left hand hitter, he gives up on that. Snaps over the outside corner, and there's nothing you can do about it. So here's full. Hit the ball hard in the hole between first and second, and Beckham made a play. A good play. And that ball into the gap. Alex is there. Two down. When the little guys hit him in the air, that's what you're looking for. Now this will be his opportunity to get a little measure of revenge against Johnny Damon, who has tormented him in the past. Unless your last name is Wynn. Well, Jimmy Wynn was a, he was not the typical little guy. No. He was about, he was about as wide as a bus. <laughs> the toy cannon. Jimmy Wynn. And a nice person. I saw him hit one all the way out of the stadium. In Caracas. At of University Stadium and that is a jaunt. I used to throw a cutter inside the right handers in the minor leagues. I got to the big leagues and the pitching coach said what is that. So a little cut fastball throw it right at the hitter and he gives way and it goes over the inside corner. He says you think that's going to work up here. I said I think so. So I threw it to Jimmy Wynn and no sooner did it leave my hand than it was against the wall in left field and I came in because let that work out for you. I said maybe I'll keep it away from now on. Boy, he was strong. Well, I'll tell you what it would be like that ball he hit in Caracas. It'd be like hitting it up in the Xfinity. <laughs> it's up in that upper tank up there in the Xfinity. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a poke. Damon pops it up. Boy, this is when Paulie's going to take charge like he should. Make it lucky. AJ said, "Be my guest." One, two, three inning after two and a half. Still four nothing. Good guy. Now the first 10,000 fans in attendance will receive a Frank Thomas bobblehead. The big hurts. And there it is. That's this Tuesday first 10,000 fans. So make your plans call 866 Sox game. And get one of those. Big hurt. Bobbleheads. Here's Beckham bottom of the third four nothing Sox. Drops a hook on him. A beautiful day here in the beautiful city. Another one in the count of one two. That was the best that Neiman has thrown all day. The best curveball is the one that 
looks like a strike and then dips low and out of the zone away from the right hand hitter. Much you can do with that. Yes, he did. And that's out number one. Well, Nard said he went. He had a touch too far, and Kelly Shopik able to block it. And Gordon has that slow walk back to the bench. Here's Alex, with a little comebacker. Outfield, slightly to the right. Upton, just a few steps back of where he normally has been playing in the first three games of this series because of the wind. He really plays a shallow, shallow center field. And he can go back and get him. Three and up. Oh. Neiman out of Rice University, despite the fact that his parents both went to Texas. They were Longhorns. And that's ball four. So good speed aboard. Well, we saw how difficult it was to run against Kelly Shot. He does have one of the quicker deliveries around. Juan Pierre was cut down for the first time this year in the second inning. Well, there's no catcher in this league who's quicker. No, he's there. He there's, there's guys with stronger arms, but not quicker. No, he's that's about as good as he reminds me a lot of Ron Karkovice, former White Sox catcher, who's just about as fast as it got. Saw him gun down Ricky Henderson two times in a row in one game in Oakland, and the second time got him easy. First time was bang bang. Second time it was he gone. But when he was young, have you seen anybody? Much quicker or more accurate than Pudge Rodriguez? No. He no. was really good. And you couldn't take a secondary lead on the bases, or he would pick you up. Well, Bench had a better arm. Yep. But Pudge had the fastest feet of any catcher that I've ever seen. Don't forget, Johnny was a lot taller, so it took him a little bit longer to unfurl in Pudge. Well, there's a lot of people today, and, and you know. Who did not? Who's not, never seen Johnny Bench play? It's hard for them to believe anybody can throw better than Pudge Rodriguez. But believe me, <laughs> Johnny Bench had a better arm than Pudge. Well, when a man can hold five baseballs in his hand, he certainly has a lot of leverage in which to throw. I like Johnny. Johnny JB is a good guy. He what a hitter, and he had a problem in his chest. And they operated on him as Jim Hickey goes out to talk to Neiman. And when they did, they cut him open. He had a spot on his lung. And they cut him open, and from then they closed him back up. And from that time on, he was never able to swing the bat. They thought he had lung cancer. Yeah. And he had exactly what I had, which was valley fever. When they took the lower part of the, the lung out, and because of the big cut, which was back to front, they saw it was a fungal. Infection. It was not cancer. And Johnny told me, he said, You look at my numbers up until I was 25, and then look at my numbers from 25 on. He goes, I'm not going to tell you I wasn't a good player, but I will tell you that I was never the same he player never, after said, the surgery. He said he was never the same, not even close, really. So here's Polly. Polly cranked out his second homer, 10th RBI in the first inning. And if you miss that home run, poof. that's a fastball right down the middle. Well, he doesn't miss many of those. Pretty good lead. And that fastball up high. There's 
the strike. Well, he didn't particularly care for that call. No, he thought that was a generous 3 0 call. We'll take a look on pitch tracks. And that one he had the top of the zone. Long set. And that's ball four. So back to back walks. And it'll bring up Carlos Quentin. When you're not scoring runs, you can't be near as patient with your starter if he's having some problems. So it's Andy Sennenstein, who was the only holdover from the bullpen from last year. Out of Kent State University. Sennenstein used to being a long man, and he's getting ready in a hurry. Carlos went out to his counterpart, Matt Joyce. Good job. Now, Pudge Rodriguez physically is the best catcher I've ever seen in all my yeah, he was, 50 plus years. He was just something. Plus, he, when you're the smartest catcher I've ever seen, a couple of guys, and Pierzynski's one of them. He's right at the top. He's putting numbers down. Breaking ball, no, and a count 2 0. Oh. Sox had a smart catcher a long time ago, Sherman Lawler. And the Indians had a very Jim smart Hegan. catcher in Jim Hegan, right. whose son Mike is a radio broadcaster, along with Tom Hamilton. But Hegan handled a great staff, one that won 111 games out of 154 in 1954. Andy Harden told me we were talking on the plane one night. He said, in his opinion, you can never be a great catcher unless you caught a great staff. Well, it's, it's, you could be as good a catcher as you want to. Your staff has an ERA of six. They're probably not going to get the acclaim. No, no. He was, he was talking about from, from the standpoint of to see how these guys work. Well, to see how great pitchers work. Yeah. No, no question. And he, well, his, his biggest philosophy of catching was first, first, Responsibility of a catcher is to get a guy in his rhythm and keep him in. He said, I don't care if you can take foul tip off his shoulder, I don't care if you can take foul tip off the cup, keep him in his rhythm. Find his rhythm and then keep him in it. I'd rather take a foul tip off my shoulder if you don't mind. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's into left field. Sam Fold is there. And that's out number two. Well, what you have to have to be a great catcher, you have a game plan. You go over with the pitching coach and the pitcher before the game, and the catcher is sitting there, and you talk about how you're going to pitch everyone, and it has to do with how you're going to defend them also. But then you have to have pitchers who can execute the game plan. It's one thing to put down a finger, another thing to then move over and say, okay, I want the curveball outside. You hang it up in the zone. You hit it away from the defense and it doesn't look too good. Well, that's one thing about Pierzynski. As AJ swings and misses, you can, as you say, you can have any kind of game plan you want. And it can be right. At that point in time when you're going over the hitters, it can be right. All of a sudden now, these guys might make some adjustments on you, and it's up to the catcher to pick up those adjustments and then make adjustments right there. No doubt. Back to the middle in the center field for a base hit. Here comes Alex. Upton will just get it back in. And it's a 5 nothing Sox lead. He just golfed that one right back through the middle. A.J. just put the bat on it. RBI number five. He was actually just trying to defend. That ball is almost on the ground. And A.J. takes it right back up the middle. Neiman at 6 9 is not able to get down fast enough to be able to control this one. And it appears that that is going to be it for Jeff Neiman. So Andy Sonnenstein is going to come in the game as Neiman has gotten pummeled early. And we'll be back after these messages.
Hasn't had an opportunity to work too much this year. Just an inning and a third. Tall right hander. Inherits two on. In a five to nothing game. We're still in the bottom of the third inning. Two outs. As Neiman had all kinds of problems. His defense didn't help him all that much in the second. But the Sox have been homering, singling, and doubling him to death. And here's Omar. Found it out. Is Obrist at second. Great first pitch strike. Well, the first time we saw Sonnenstein, we had no chance. He was dropping. He was spotting his curveball as well as it can be spotted. He looked like a Steve Stone out there. Well, he was a mainstay in that rotation. That's in the right field. And that'll retire the side. Pick up one. And we lead at 5 nothing. Five runs, five hits, no errors for our Sox. No runs, one hit, and one error for their Rays here in the top of the fourth inning. It'll be Upton, Johnson, and Zobrist. Third, fourth, and fifth place hitters. Outfield straight up. Just a bit of a gap out there in right center. Big 6 6 right hander Gavin Floyd. On the fist and reminder join the new White Sox mobile group and win autograph memorabilia from your favorite players receive special offers and updates exclusive deals contest info and great prizes message and data rates may apply Tech Sox to 244 769. That's long. You haven't said a good curveball early in this one the only walk coming to the man you're looking at BJ Upton. has a couple of strikeouts and a big five run lead. Gavin had a great good precursor to this start today watching yesterday's game. And he realized that you got the curveball over the plate with the complexion of this lineup these days, they weren't going to get him. Now is that back to our right? And a nice catch on the carol. Two two pitch. He gone. 
just out guessed him there because he was looking either for the cutter or the slider. And he got a fastball. And couldn't pull the trigger. Here's Johnson. Grounded out to his counterpart. Canerco. Takes ball one. Not even at one. Oh yeah. Pull the string on it. Good straight change, and that was a big pitch in his arsenal last time out. That's the first one he's thrown in this one. I know it's good to show the left-handers that pitch. He gone. Because then you can show him that pitch. He won't hit the changeup, and he won't hit the curveball. And he got one of each. Four strikeouts in the last six hitters. And here's Zobris. He also grinded out to Canerco. Close. Didn't get it. Big game yesterday after giving them that game the day before. Giving them five earned runs and all of a sudden having a guy make a start, making his first start in the White Sox uniform. And we were looking at the hat. <laughs> and out there to this kill. A hat comes flying out of the stands. <laughs> or decides it's stylish enough where he might want to look into that. <laughs> well, he's a. One of the better dressers. Yes. In Major League Baseball. Very much so. Two out. And the 2 1 pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two and two. But that was a big game yesterday. And that's why you've got to have a, sh a short memory in, in any sport. And you had that opportunity in baseball. It's not like football when you get. A week to think about it. That's foul. You've got to have, and one of the shortest memories we've got in the White Sox uniform happens to be, fortunately for us, our manager. Now he'll, it'll bother him that night, but when he gets to the ballpark the next day, he's ready to go get him again. The Lousy's been around long enough to realize that when you're playing 162, you're going to have some disasters. Change up, he gone. Strikes out the side. We we'll go to the bottom of the fourth, leading by five spots.
our kids day. First 10,000 kids 13 and under will receive a Gordon Beckham wall claim courtesy of Radio Disney. That is Sunday, April 17th. Mark Tian will lead it off. He hit a ball into deep left field. But Sam Fole went back on, fighting the sun, fighting the wind, back on the track, dropped it. And that's one of those things right there for me. I would have given him a base hit because that was a tough catch. Takes it up, takes ball two. There's a shot. Oh, look at the play by Johnson. That's a beauty. Robbing Tian of extra bases. Hang Wolfham. Big effort by Dan Johnson because if this ball's down the line, it's going to be two for sure. He crushes it. And Johnson right there. Then says he will take it himself. That's a defensive gem. That ball hit hard right at Matt Joyce by Morrell. Grant had an RBI double and scored a run back in the second inning. He has hit it right on the button twice. Sonnenstein was right in the middle of the starting rotation in 2008. He went 13 and 9 in 32 starts. Then in 9, he had only 18 starts as he was a little bit nicked up and went back down to the minor leagues. Same last year. But he was used mostly out of the bullpen, having only four starts. And here's Juan Pierre. He's one for two with a big two out RBI single. Takes a bunt, takes a strike to even the count of one. Top of the seventh at Comerica Park, Kansas City leading Detroit seven to two. That ball is hammered foul. Those Kansas Cities have gotten off to a very good start. We told you when we played them both. I mean, everybody realized that probably at the end of the day, Kansas City and Cleveland aren't going to be there, but they can really hit. And Cleveland is getting some surprising pitching. Masterson has been outstanding. Back to the second baseman, Zobrist. And they'll do it a one, two, three inning for Sonnenstein. We're into the fifth leading by five.
Matt Joyce who has their lone hit that was a double down into the right field corner will lead it off. Spoken back. One pitch. And one out. And you can text Subway to 29653. And if you are the 500th texture, you could win five five dollar foot long subs from Subway. Yes, I know, but I'm still a little bitter at the eight meatballs. I'm looking for 10. Can't find them in any of those subs. You're saying. He's upset they only put eight little meatballs in there. <laughs> There's a strike on the outside corner to Sean Rodriguez. I don't think I've ever seen anybody. I've been counting. There's that's high to right. Trying to come back, but it's not going to make it. I don't think I've ever seen anybody. Either. Likes meatballs, hamburgers, hot dogs, more than. Stone Paul. Yeah, you can grind it up, and it was once alive with a face. It's mine. <laughs> well, Gavin's had tremendous command of just about all of his pitches, and last inning he broke out the straight change, struck out the side, two of them on straight changes, and if he gets that. To go with his cutter and his curveball. Oh, he might throw one hitter. Two and two. Shop it on deck. Shanked out there in the right field. Two down. That'll bring up shopping. Struck out his first trip. After that double by Joyce, there has been a non existent Ray offense. As Gavin Floyd has been in control. Know the count. Thirty-year-old veteran receiver. And make your plans to be with us tomorrow. Mark Burley against Dallas Braden. A couple of southpaws out on that bump. And if you can't make it to the ballpark, we'll be right back here on Comcast Sportsnet. First to three with Oakland. We're going to run Burley, Jackson, the Danks out there. They're going to run Braden, Cahill, and Anderson. There are the matchups, and this Oakland team can really pitch. The only question for them is can they score enough runs to contend with an awfully powerful Texas team who started off 7 and 1 this year? 2 1 pitch. Into the LG Skyline Club seats. Beautiful day here in the beautiful city. Mercy. Nice crowd on hand. Why not? He gone. Six strikeouts. We're halfway home. And Floyd leads it 5 0.
from Minnesota. But they're playing in Minnesota. So here we go. Bottom of the fifth inning. Five nothing. Good guys. Beckham. Rios and Canerco. One pitch. A nice little bowling book bounce right there and one out. Beckham now one for three with a homer. That was in the first inning. And a reminder. You can join the White Sox Volunteer Corps. That's a team of fans who will work side by side with us in our efforts to make a difference for others. Now together we can be a powerful force for change. So visit WhiteSox.com slash Volunteer Corps for more details. Alex really hasn't seen a very hittable pitch yet. But he's facing Sonnenstein for the first time. Ball a good one. One and one to count. Top of the eighth now in Detroit, 7 4. Tigers with a couple of runs in the seventh inning. Kansas City on top. Back to the middle base hit. Alex now one for two with a walk and a run scored. Takes this ball right back up the middle. It's a good pitch by Simonstein. It's down in the zone. But Alex, like a lot of the new breed of right hand hitters, perhaps because umpires have been calling the low pitch, he likes the ball down. Well, as opposed to about 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, with the balloon, with the balloon chest. When the umpires had the balloons, yep. you probably had. Among right handed hitters, yeah. right handed hitters, you probably had tops. I mean, absolute giving the, the benefit of the doubt. Tops, 10% of guys were pretty good low ball hitters, 90% were high ball hitters. Now, it's just the opposite. I don't find a whole lot of guys that like the ball up anymore because more times than not, if the catcher catches it above his mask, which is just above the belt, that's going to be called. A ball. Decent lead by Alex. There he goes. Got a good jump. Chop it with the good throw. Boy, he has nailed the last two right on the money, right out of the textbook. Here's our Xfinity high speed action replay, and it's Kelly Shopik, who is two for two today in throwing out base runners. This is a perfect throw. Pretty much Alex tags himself, and he can't do it any better than that. No. Pauly has homered, and he has walked. Takes that curveball outside. Deep, stay fair, stay fair, stay fair. It will, you can put it on the board. Yes, yes. Number three for Kaneko, second in this game, and it's a six nothing Sox lead. Mercy. With that home run and run batted in. Paul takes over the team lead and runs batted in with 11. So 3 and 11 are Ford home run replay. It's a hanging slider right down the middle. The only question is would it stay fair long enough? The answer was absolute. So here's Quentin. Hi. Breaking ball. Thank you. 
curtain call for our captain. Solo home runs to this spot. That ball is flying. You've got to keep it down or do what Gavin's doing and strike out most of the hitters. And the 2 0. Oh. He was all over that one just underneath it. And another good catch by our same fan on another carom down there. He has made two. Another hanging slider and Carlos realizing that that's a pitch you could have ridden out of here. That's high into left center field. Sam Fole makes the catch and that'll retire the side, but long home run by Canerco. Sox lead it by half a dozen. Game Mark Burley picked up a gold glove. Well deserved for Mark Burley. And we'll toss in a little family shot and also some love for Lexi Ramirez, the Silver Slugger Award as the best offensive shortstop in the league. He also had just a great year on defense, but no claim. One pitch, one out here in the top of the sixth. Reed Brignac. Now over two. Needing base runners, still a little surprised that Fold has not tried to bunt his way on. There's the strike in the count one and one. That's a little bit low. That's trouble. Cole makes a turn. He will go in the second. So just the second hit, both doubles off the bats of the Rays. Gavin had tried to stay away with everything, as you can see by pitch tracks, and that time he stayed away but got too much of the plate. 
Holmes just slices it into the corner. And that'll bring up Johnny Damon, who's grounded to short and fouled out to Canerco. And there's a base that slapped in the hole. When a guy's hitting 667 against you, you have to figure that he's going to find a hole pretty early in the game. And now he's one for three, and that's well below his lifetime average against Gavin. Now 11 for 18. So one out runners at the corners, and here's Upton who has walked and he has struck out. Spread out straight up. Ooh, he got away with one there. Got away with a cookie. For Upton. Well, to the hottest hitter on this team, Gavin just spins one. And it doesn't do anything, but he gets a strike call. A lot of times hitters are going to be surprised. They see a hanging breaking ball and they expect it's going to break. It does nothing but back up a little bit and wind up taking it. You see a lot of guys jam themselves on that pitch. The ball is striking out here in the sixth inning. Sox with three home runs, two by Canerco, one by Beckham. Lead at six nothing on seven hits. That has popped up right side. Carlos coming on. He's there, makes the catch. And that is out number two. Big pitch by Gavin. For the moment, saving the run. All you needed was a fly ball of medium depth. And a reminder you can organize a group outing of 20 or more guests during the season, purchase a block of tickets, or enhance your outing with one of six great party areas. And those are the Bertucci boys out there. You will have some good food and you will have some fun. So call 312 674 1000 or visit whitesox.com to reserve your group outing. Here's Johnson. Hard grounder to Canerco. And a strikeout. He throws it away. Well, Gavin had him. But unfortunately, that ball was nowhere near second base. So a good thought process, bad execution. The Rays are on the board. Johnny Damon is off to the races. They got him dead to rights on a throw and a good throw to second base. Omar is there in plenty of time. And Gavin just throws it behind him. So now Damon on third. And there's the strike on the corner. Big hack, no contact, 0 and 2. There won't be any contact on a straight change or a curveball. That's the straight change. Uppercut swing, it swung well over the top of it. Go to. That ball. It was supposed to be a curveball, just slipped out of his hands. Mm -hmm. 
That's blocked. Get over there, Gavin. Yes! What a play again! He called him safe. He called he him safe he, now. said he was juggling it. And Ozzie thought he had it long enough. Doug Eddings said no. Would have been a terrific play. Paulie's trying to explain that he was taking it out of his glove. He's going to lose this one because it's a judgment well, call. They're going to have a little conference here. He's going to go to second base and ask Dana DeMuth. I think Dana DeMuth put up his right hand. I think he might have called him out. Looked to me like he had it long enough and looked to me like he had the bag. Now watch it again. He catches it. He's got the bag. He's out right there. And in the transference to yep. the hand, he dropped it. Yep. And I think Dana, I think Dana DeMuth at second base might have had a better look at it, amazingly enough, than Eddings, who was probably looking at Gavin's foot on the bat. Well, I just like the idea they're having a conference about it. That's the whole thing, regardless. He's out. He gone. And that'll do it. They put one on the board. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth, leading 6-1. Then he throws out Dana Demir. Then decides, well, he's going to throw out Kerwin Danley. He's going to throw out Doug Eddings. <laughs> he's going to throw out Paul Nauert. Now he goes back out to talk with Paul Nauert again. He still hasn't left the field. Still talking with Dana Demuth and Paul Nauert. Now there it looks like he had gone, cooled off, and then decided he'd come back on the field again. Most amazing part of this is we've seen two in the same series. Three, four, three, one. four, one. In the same game. Yeah. I mean, just amazing. <laughs> Joe. Joe, fine. <laughs> well, you know, with his team at one and seven and not doing much of anything, when he got an opportunity to come out and put on a show, he was going to do that. Try anything to psych up his baseball team. So, Davey Martinez will take over. I will say one thing. If you're going to get the boot, you might as well get your money's worth. He got his money's worth. And then some. Yeah. He got his money's worth. There's no question about it. You're, of course, one of the better managers in the game of baseball. So here we go in the bottom of the six. Six runs, seven hits, one error for our guys. One run, three hits, and one error for their guys. It'll be A.J., Viscale, and T.N. To face Sonnenstein. AJ one for two with a big two out RBI single. Top of the eighth in Baltimore, three nothing Texas. That's in the left field. 
Going foul and out of play. Top of the six in Minnesota, Oakland shutting him out again. Two nothing. They won yesterday, one nothing. We'll take a look at our United Airlines leaderboard and we'll see among active players Omar Vizquel third in all the baseball behind Derek Jeter and Ivan Rodriguez. That's mighty select company on there. And Johnny Damon is fifth. Omar 0 for 2 today. Going down to the second. And flying to right. Sox with two in the first, two in the second, one in the third, one in the fifth. Three home runs if you're just tuning in. Two in the first inning, one by Beckham, one by Canerco. And Canerco again in the fifth. Slaps that one foul. So the count nothing in two. Big day for Paul today. Taking over the team lead and runs batted in. A perfect day, a couple of home runs. Sandwiched around the walk. Thank you, Plenty. You be with us tomorrow night. Mark Burley against Dallas Braden. First of a three game set against the Oakland A's. The A's here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Off day on Thursday, then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Angels to conclude this 11 day, 10 game homestand. And there's a look at it before it's off on a long road trip. Tampa Bay, Detroit, and we see the Yankees for four on that trip to end it. Top set foul down past Harold. Oakland's going to bring in the third best pitching staff ERA wise in the American League. They're also going to bring in the worst fielding team in the American League and somehow that doesn't go hand in hand. One and two the count. To our 43 year old future Hall of Fame shortstop. And that breaking ball into center field. And a reminder. Keep an eye out for Dog Day presented by Hills Pet Nutrition. That's Tuesday, May 17th. Sox versus the Rangers at 7 10 p.m. So for more information on Hills Pet Nutrition, visit hillspet.com slash wet. Wet. Dog Day, just a great day. We'll see more Rhodesian Ridgebacks out here. Boy, I'll tell you. But Larry and Layla don't travel well, so they won't be here. So in case he has one in his wife Valerie, I'll tell you she is maybe the sweetest dog they're, I have ever seen. They're great, aren't they? I have never seen a sweeter dog than that Rhodesian with. But don't let anybody come around the house. No, they uh, they're <laughs> very protective. Those uh, <laughs> those guys and girls, especially. Tian, 0 for two. Should be or could be, I should say, not should be. It could be one for two. Last time up, he just scalded one. Johnson made a beautiful play on him. First time up, put a high fly ball back on the track in left field. The Sam Fole was fighting the sun, fighting the wind. Went back, dropped it, and they gave him an error. But two runs scored on the play. And there's a bullet back through the middle. That boy, Mark. 
And that'll bring up Brent Morrell. It was one for two, an RBI double and a run scored in the second. And back in the fourth inning, he had another shot, a bullet right to Matt Joyce in right field. It's a third hit against Sonnenstein. He's a distant relative of former Cleveland great third baseman Kenny Keltner. Kenny Keltner he stopped Joe DiMaggio's 56 game hitting streak with two good players. Ground ball right side, and that'll do it. We'll go to the seventh, leading by five. That has popped up Zobrist. And nice catch over the shoulder by Morrell. So one pitch one out here in the top of the seventh inning. That's one of the things that Gavin has done a whole lot of today. Is because he's getting ahead early against these hitters. They're swinging early in the count. And he's getting quick outs usually on the first pitch of an inning. Pretty good so far when you look at 77 pitches and he's pitched six and a third innings. Oops. And the count one and zero oh to Joyce, who has one of the three. Ray hits. Oakland pulling away from Minnesota, leading five to nothing. That Oakland pitching staff is young and very talented. Two and one to count. And he gets even. Shot right back through the middle. So Joyce is two for three. A one out single, and that'll bring up Sean Rodriguez. Joyce, one of the few guys that has been able to figure out Gavin Floyd today. In this series, coming off two 12 inning games against Kansas City, what Ozzie wanted from his starters were innings. 
Get eight from Jackson. Six plus from John Danks. Six from Umber. And Floyd has gone into the seventh inning. So the starters have gone deep in the game. Off the outside corner. Rodriguez has grounded to short and gone out to right. And the runner goes. Checks it up. Paulie said, I'll take it. And that is out number two. More than happy there to trade the base for the out. So here's Kelly shopping. Both for two with a couple of strikeouts. First pitch strike to the 30 year old veteran receiver. Just enough. Souvenir right side. Thank you, right here, Gavin. A beautiful but windy day here in the beautiful city. Going to go as a stolen base for Joyce. And Shopik was just barely able to check his swing. Another one of those, and he won't be able to check. Bottom of the eighth in Baltimore, still 3 0 Texas. He gone. Hook. And that'll do it. Seventh inning stretch from beautiful U.S. Cellular Field. Sox lead at six to one.
There it is. Bottom of the seventh inning. Six one good guys. Top of the order Juan Pierre Gordon Beckham Alex Rios. To face Andy Stein and Stein. One is one for three a two out RBI single. The offense has featured the long ball. But Gavin Floyd has been magnificent in his seven innings of work. Breaking ball strike. Feel very short, swung around to the left. Say fair. Nope. Well, he's been pulling the ball a lot more, making a bid for a double down the line on that breaking ball. But hooked it a little too much. He did not go. And a reminder tickets for White Sox home games at U.S. Cellular Field are on sale right now. Tickets start at just $12 per seat. So purchase your tickets today by visiting WhiteSox.com or calling 866 Sox Game. Got him. And that's out number one. First strikeout for Sonnenstein, second by Tampa Bay pitching today. So here's Gordon, he's one for three. Cranked out his second homer of the season in the first inning. Takes it up and takes strike one. Top foul. Sonnenstein's been using a lot of off speed pitches, getting ahead, generally restoring a semblance of order after a very tough outing by Jeff Neiman, who went just two and a third innings, gave up five hits, five runs, a couple of walks, and he struck out one. Gordon with two strike hit. Alex on deck. Breaking ball. Two down. Will pen up and going. And it's Ramos once again. We saw him earlier in the series. Like we saw him for just a third of an inning in the second game of the series. Did give up a run in that one. Alex is one for two with a walk, stolen base. Check that. And a run score. Caught stealing. Nice pitch right there on the corner. Just missed the first time. That time he threaded the needle on the outside corner. And a blueprint. And that's into the LG Skyline Club seats. So the count. One and two. He's 
he had a pretty good feel for that particular release point. This is pretty good stuff today. Yeah. Everybody has to have a guy like him come out of the bullpen when your starter has a very tough day and eat up some innings so you don't ruin your bullpen. And a full count. You can see on pitch tracks exactly how Sonnenstein has decided to work Rios. He's kept everything even further away. And that ball hit in the right field. Matt Joyce is there. A one, two, three inning, and we'll go to the eighth, leading six one. Sox with two in the first, two in the second, one in the third, one in the fifth, lead at six to one. Kevin Floyd. One and zero to Reed Brignac, who has struck out and then grounded to first. Kevin's at the 95 pitch mark, so with that in mind, the bullpen is up and going, and it's Will Omen. Another souvenir in the crowd. 23,436 on a beautiful day here in the beautiful city. And they have been in it since the first inning when the Sox, if you're just tuning in, Beckham Homer and Canerco Homer. That breaking ball into left center field. Alex. So one out and a reminder you can subscribe to MLB.tv to see every White Sox game live or on demand on your computer and your favorite devices. Visit WhiteSox.com to order and get more details. Here's Sam Fold who is now one for four. Again, early in the count, and Gavin getting some relatively easy outs by staying around the strike zone with everything. What a job he's done today. Well, he broke that changeup out in the fourth inning. 
Again, he hasn't needed it a whole lot, but when he has, it's been in the zone. I don't think he's thrown one since the fifth. <laughs> no. Hasn't had to. As Johnny Damon fouls it right off his foot, hops around for a bit. Johnny is one for three. Bottom of the ninth in Detroit, Kansas City leading 9 5. Tony Pena has joined Will Oman. He gone. Strikeout number eight for Gavin will go to the bottom of the eighth, leading by five. The eighth inning. If you want to find out how to get yourself a 16,000 square foot house with seven bedrooms in Scottsdale, Arizona, here it is. This is how you do it. Well, you hit them out of the ballpark and then you make sure you knock them down so they don't get by you when you help out your starting pitcher. Then you get the opposing manager thrown out. <laughs> Joe. Who then threw out all four umpires. <laughs> which will make a few highlight reels, I'm sure. Well, Joe Madden is a wonderful manager. One of the best. He's got his hands full this year with his Yeah, team. he's he knows it. He knows it. This club, Tampa Bay last year, won 96 ball games, won the East by a game. And the count 0 and 2. Ollie, two for three with those two homers. He now has three on the season. And 11 RBIs. Carlos Quentin on deck and Pierzynski in the hole. Another breaking pitch. Sunnyside has thrown pretty well. He's had very good command of the breaking ball. Well, he really appears to have just found his rhythm out there yeah. and stayed in it. When he goes after the right-handers, he's thrown just about everything low and away. Oh, he just missed that one. Mercy. He just missed it. That ball had Billy Pierce over his head, ticketed all over. Well, this time he hung the breaking ball and got away with one. So here's Quentin. 
He has gone out to right and twice he has gone out to left. That's the final. From Comerica Park, Kansas City beats the Tigers 9 to 5. There's another rolling breaking ball, good pitch to hit. Phillies shut out the Braves 3 0 down in Atlanta. Hamels over low. That's some starting rotation those Phillies had. Question is with Brad Lidge out for a long time, will they be able to close? Broken bat. Zobras. Got him. Two down. Johnson just able to stay on the bag. Fellows breaks the bat. Zobras has got it. And Doug uh, Getting said that he kept the toe on the bag at the last instant. Not so sure about that. In fact, he didn't, but it's six to one late. Here's AJ had a big two out RBI single. This is going to be a quick inning and a fine job by Andy Schoenstein. As he came on back in the third, only gave up one run. And we'll go to the top of the ninth, leading by five. See White Sox post game live. Get analysis from Chuck and Bill. Plus, go live to Ozzy's post game remarks. Don't miss Galaxy White Sox post game live immediately following our game right here on Comcast Sportsnet fans' best friend. Tony Pena comes into the game and Pena 0 and 1 with an ERA just below silver. On for the third time. BJ Upton. Dan Johnson, Ben Zobrist here in the top of the ninth inning, 6 1 White Sox. Ball in the right field. Carlos, one pitch, one out. What a job by Gavin Floyd, who was absolutely magnificent. He was in trouble, really, only one inning and not much trouble there in the sixth. But eight innings, one run, four hits, one walk, and eight strikeouts. What a job. Here's Johnson 0 for 3. Takes first pitch strike. Well, Gavin, one of the more talented right handers in the American League. Ball hit hard. Look at the play by Beckham. Yes. Showtime. That's the way the day started off. 
was Sam Fold hitting one that Gordon Beckham did approximately the same thing in the first inning. It's only appropriate that here in the ninth, he does it again. Full out dive and from his knees, throws a strike and one out to go. And Zobrist is 0 for 3 today. And this will do it. This ball game is over. So the Sox take three out of four from the Tampa Bay Rays. They win the opener five to one. We gave them game two as they won that one nine to seven. Then yesterday, Phil Umber with a four two victory. And today, Gavin Floyd was just magnificent as we win it. Six to one, and let's check out our GMC player of the game. It is our 28-year-old right-hander, 6'6", 240 pounds, out of Palm Harbor, Florida. Gavin Floyd, our GMC player of the game. And I'll tell you what, that changeup just adds another dimension to him. Well, it's one thing to get the curveball over the plate. We know when he does, he's usually in good shape. But when he's getting the changeup and the cutter over the plate, along with throwing most of his fastballs in the zone and adding the curveball with it. You have a performance like he had today, which was one where he was just unhittable. What a job. What a very good series against a team that you're supposed to beat at this point. And after that one disaster in the second game, this team came back and played two of their better games of the year. Well, that's that's in large part, I'll tell you, is that we've got Ozzy in that uniform down there leading the ball club. You've got Canerco as the captain. These guys, I'll tell you, they can... They can exhibit that short memory that you need to be a winner because when you play like they did in the second game of the series and hand them five unearned runs, that can be a devastating thing. But they came right back, no problem, taking game three and game four. So the Sox now stand at six and three on the season, while the Rays are now one and eight. So they're waiting on Sarah Kustak, 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 though, excuse me, to see if she can get. A post game interview down there on the field. And we'll see if she can uh, keep everything in yeah. order down there as the wind is howling. She's got Paulie down there. All right, let's go down on the field. Sarah Kusak here with Paul Canerco in front of the White Sox dugout. Paul, your 28th multi home run game in your career. You get two solo shots tonight. Is there a difference for you the way you're seeing the ball at the plate with something? like this happens well I've seen it good um, you know I've been taking some good swings but uh, I've been kind of hooking the ball a little bit and uh, you know today I finally stayed uh, inside the ball got it up in the air with some backspin and uh, got some balls out you, you told us just a few days ago you you were still grinding you now lead the team in RBI hits and home runs are you starting to feel that groove at the plate today I felt good today was the first day where I felt like you know I could hit a ball and drive a ball you know over the fence um, so I was kind of a mess before the game. I got in the cage with Walk, and he gave me something. And I just kind of ran with it. You guys get some runs on the board, but also Gavin Floyd putting up zeros early. What did you think about his performance? Well, that's huge because, uh, you know, lately the games we've been playing have been kind of going back and forth. And, um, you know, we got the early lead, but you could tell right away Gavin had his stuff. And, um, you know, you still need strong starting pitching no matter how many runs you get. And, uh, you know, it wasn't like we had a huge lead. It was only four or five runs. And, uh you know, he, he just took the ball and ran with it. Good for him. All right. Thanks so much, Paul. Congratulations. Okay. All right. Sox won it six to one. Now stand at six and three. So for my partner, the Stone Pony, Steve Stone. For our director, Jim Andrew, our producer, Mike Leary, our associate producer, Dave Ross, our technical manager, Mark Harper, also the executive producer, Jim Corno Jr. And for the man who runs this booth up here, the mayor, Mean Joe Groove, also Mike Mayer, Frank DeMotto, Jeff Hilbert, this is the Hawk. So long, everybody.